So in the previous video, we will saw what a Carnot cycle is and what a reversed Carnot cycle is and how it is a reversible cycle uh, made of reversible processes and it serves as a very good, um, very good reference or a basis point to, cover, uh, to compare real cycles of real engines, right. Um, today in this video, we are going to look at some things called Carnot principles, right. And there are a couple of Carnot principles. Uh, simply put, the Carnot principle state that number one, all reversible engines operating between the same source and sink temperatures have the same efficiency. No matter what their cycle is, no matter how they operate, no matter what the materials of operation are, no matter what the working fluid is. As long as you have reversible cycles, reversible heat engines operating between the same two source and sink temperatures, you will have the same efficiency, right. And that is a very powerful statement and that forms the basis as we will see in future videos of defining the thermodynamic temperature scale, right. And the second is that all irreversible cycles have an efficiency that is lower than the reversible cycles or the reversible heat engines. So we will formally write it down, Carnot principles. So all reversible heat engines that operate between two, two reservoirs which are at the same temperature, so TH and TL. So if we fix TH and fix TL, then the uh, all reversible heat engines operating between these two thermal reservoirs, that is the source and sink reservoirs, have the same temp have the same efficiency, right? And consequently, also all refrigerators and heat pumps that operate between two given thermal energy reservoirs, uh, that is the source and sink temperatures, have the same COP, right. So this is the first Carnot principle. The second Carnot principle is that all irreversible heat engines So um, the second principle says that all irreversible heat engines have efficiency that operate between two given temperatures TH and TL have efficiencies that are lower than a reversible heat engine operating between the same two reservoirs. So uh, if I have a fixed temperature TH 
and a fixed temperature TL and I can fix them at any temperature, um, uh, any temperature TH and any temperature TL, but I have to fix them and once I fix them, all reversible heat engines have the same efficiency, right. So once I have a reversible heat engine operating between these two temperature limits, then I have the same efficiency. So it could be a small engine, another could be a big engine, uh, one could have water as the working fluid, the other could have mercury as the working fluid, one could be made of steel, the other could be made of gold, it does not matter. As long as I have a reversible heat engine that operates between two given thermal energy reservoirs, I will have the exact same efficiency for all of those reversible heat engines. And uh, all reversible heat pumps or refrigerators operating between two given temperature limits also have the same COP. That is what the first principle says. The second principle says that um, reversible heat engines are always going to be more efficient than irreversible ones that are operating between the same temperature uh, reservoirs, same temperature limits. So it is always important to compare two engines or two refrigerators that operate between the same temperature limits, otherwise we cannot really compare them, right. So but once we fix those temperatures TH and TL, then if we have a reversible heat engine, then all reversible heat engines have the same efficiency, all reversible refrigerators or heat pumps have the same efficiency and all reversible heat engines are more efficient than irreversible heat engines and all irreversible uh, refrigerators or heat pumps have COP values that are lower than reversible heat pumps or refrigerators. And so these together form what are called the Carnot principles. And it is easy to show that if we violate this, for example, if we have an irreversible heat engine that is more efficient than a reversible heat engine, then we can show that we either violate the Kelvin-Planck statement or the Clausius statement and that is what we are going to show uh, further in this video. So, so let us assume that uh, I have two thermal energy reservoirs, uh, one TH and the other TL, right, and uh, I have a reversible heat engine. operating between these two thermal energy reservoirs and I have an irreversible heat engine also operating between these two thermal energy reservoirs. And to prove this, uh, let us assume that the irreversible heat engine has an efficiency that is greater than the reversible heat engine, right. And so uh, we assume that eta irreversible is greater than eta reversible. Assume, right? And we are going to show if we assume this, we are going to show that the Kelvin Planck statement or the Clausius statement gets violated if uh, this were to be true. Now, let us assume that each of these engines is given uh, heat QH from the high temperature reservoir. So, let us assume that those two are the same, right? And then uh, let us assume that this outputs a work W reversible and this outputs a work W irreversible, right. And we are assuming this implies we are assuming that W reversible is less than W irreversible. This is what we are assuming, right. And uh, so therefore, um, we also should have uh, QL reversible and QL irreversible and so we are claiming that QL reversible is greater than QL irreversible, right. So if we assume that this has an efficiency greater than the reversible heat engine, then we must have the reversible work being less than the irreversible work. We also should have the heat rejected to the uh, thermal lower temperature reservoir T uh, QL in the reversible heat engine 
should be greater than the heat rejected in the irreversible heat engine, right? And so, uh, if we have this situation, we can have, a, we can sort of merge these two and consider this. Um, before we do that, uh, we can, because these are, because this is a reversible heat engine, I can operate this heat engine in reverse as a refrigerator, right? Which means that I can have um, this take energy QL reversible from the low temperature reservoir, put in a work that is uh, uh, W reversible and reject heat QH to the high temperature reservoir. So, because this is a reversible heat engine, I can reverse it and operate it as a refrigerator. So, what will I do? If I take out heat equal to QL reversible from the low temperature reservoir, put in external work equivalent to W reversible, then I should be able to output a heat that is equal to QH, right? And now, suppose I consider a system like that looks like the dashed line, right? So, for the dashed line system, let us call that system 1. So, what is the heat interaction that it has with the high temperature reservoir? So, as you can see, um, this combined system is taking uh, heat QH from the high temperature reservoir and inputting back QH to the high temperature reservoir. So, that means it has no interaction, no net interaction with the high temperature reservoir, right? So, it is a system that has no interaction uh, with the high temperature reservoir. So, let us call this the combined system, right? And uh, it is taking in W reversible work, it is outputting W irreversible. And if this is true, then W reversible is greater than W reversible, which means that the net work interaction should be W irreversible minus W reversible. So, I am taking in a work interaction of W reversible, outputting a work interaction of W irreversible and if this is greater than this, then the net work interaction is a positive work W irreversible minus W reversible, right? And here I am taking in, uh, the system takes in QL reversible and uh, gives back QL irreversible, but then uh, we have the difference uh, which is QL reversible minus QL irreversible and by definition, by this assumption, QL reversible minus QL irreversible is greater than 0, which means I have a positive interaction uh, of there is a positive heat that is going that is equal to QL reversible minus QL irreversible, right? So, this is in effect is what the combined system is doing and uh, this combined system is taking in heat equivalent to QL reversible minus QL irreversible and outputting work W irreversible minus W reversible, both of these quantities are positive, which means that this is a system that operates in a cycle and takes, interacts with only one thermal energy reservoir and is able to output all of it as work because this is by first law, this should be equal to this, right? And so therefore, I have a system that is interacting with only one thermal energy reservoir operates in a cycle and outputs work continuously, which is obviously impossible because it violates the Kelvin-Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics, right? So, this violates And so, therefore, uh, we cannot have irreversible heat engines operating between the two same two temperature reservoirs uh, that are more efficient than reversible heat engines between the same two reservoirs, 